curator here at the National Museum of Natural History, and I'm the director of the Smithsonian Global Volcanism Program. I'm here in my laboratory where I study volcanoes and how they work. Have you ever wondered that? How does a volcano work? What is the force that propels all of that rock and ash into the sky of an explosive eruption, the Plinian Cloud? Well, magma chambers beneath explosive volcanoes and seltzer bottles have something in common, contents under pressure. This seltzer bottle has carbon dioxide dissolved in the water, and it's all under pressure. If we take this seltzer bottle and release the pressure by opening the top, boom, Mount St. Helens. The carbon dioxide, when the pressure goes down, doesn't want to be dissolved in the water anymore. So the carbon dioxide comes out, forms bubbles, the bubbles coalesce, and they are less dense, and they start moving towards the surface as fast as they can. The water can't get out of the way, so a combination of gas and water shoots out the top of this seltzer bottle. A magma chamber is exactly analogous. In that case, we have volcanic gases, water and carbon dioxide dissolved in the magma. When we uncork that volcano, the pressure falls, and those gases no longer want to be dissolved in that magma. So they form bubbles. So, to recap, explosive volcanic eruptions are driven by gases that were originally dissolved in the magma coming out of solution, forming bubbles, which then propel the gas plus magma towards the surface, causing the big explosion.